Olama lets you get your own large language model running on your own system. And this can be pretty important if you're doing big tasks like writing an essay for your homework, but you don't have any money to spend on ChatGPT to do it for you. So in this video, I'll show you how to get Olama running on your own computer, how to install different models like a text model or even a vision model, and how to use slightly more dumped down models in case you don't have a graphics card made out of gold. Olama is really easy to use. It runs in the command line, its installation is pretty simple, and it comes with a lightweight API. The first thing you'll need is a Mac, Linux, or Windows machine. If you don't have one of these, you're probably doing something wrong. The first thing I'm gonna do is head to Google and search up the website Olama. The address is olama.com. You'll be taken to the landing page, which is as simple as it is to use. All you really have to do is select to download it to get started. You'll have the option here between Mac, Linux, or Windows, and it'll pre-default to the operating system you're using. I'm using Mac OS, so I'll just download the instance for this one. The file will be zipped, and it'll be about one or 200 megabytes. Then just unzip it or open it. If you're running on Windows, you'll need to go through the setup, selecting next, next, and finish. While if you're on Mac OS, you just grab the app folder and drag it into your applications folder. Now I'll open up the Olama application from search. Here I'll go through the next couple of prompts, installing it so that it works in my command line and give it the permission it needs in Mac OS. Now I'll need to open up the terminal or command line, depending on the operating system you're using. I've got an instance open just here. Then I'll run the command olama run llama3. This will download the large language model for you to use locally on your machine. It is about five gigs, so it'll take some time to download, but once it has, you'll have this prompt area here where you can start writing directly to the interface that's kind of like a bare bones chat GPT. This is the simplest example, but there's additional configuration and system prompts we can add as well as setting up vision models. So let's take a look at those. I have a new terminal here. I'm simply going to run Olama by itself and it'll give me a list of available commands I can run. I won't go through all of them, but some of the ones worth knowing include things like run to run a model, list to list all the models you've downloaded so far, rm to remove a model and help if you're ever confused. Let's try one now. I'm going to run an Olama list and I can see the latest model I've downloaded. Passing in a command like Olama show dash dash system will show you the system prompt, which I haven't set at this point. There are more commands if you run a model itself. Let's run the Llama 3 model by running Olama run Llama 3. Here, I've got a message prompt, but instead of writing a message to the language model, I'm instead gonna pass in forward slash question mark or forward slash help. This will list out all the available commands. And in this case, I have a few new ones like set, show, load, save, clear, and buy. These also have sub options. So if I pass in forward slash show, I'll get options for info, license, system, template, etc. If I run forward slash set, I can change how the model is functioning. There's quite a few different options here. Let me show you a few examples. If I add in verbose, it gives me additional stats. So anytime I engage with the model, I get to see exactly how many tokens were used, how long it took, and a little bit more details as to how fast it's processing those tokens. Another great example, which can be useful for programming, especially locally, is setting the format of the response. In this case, I'm gonna set the format to be JSON. This means I'll get objects back from the API. You have to be careful here because if you just type in hello, you might get an empty object back. You have to designate what the object will look like. Here's a simple example. I want to list out five sci-fi books. I give the example of the layout of the object. So in the squarely braces, I add in an array with a title that is a string. This means that once I get a response, it's in that same JSON format, as you can see just up here. To then disable some of these settings, I can just pass in forward slash set once more, have a look at what their cancellations are. So in this case, if I pass in set quiet, that'll stop the stats. And if I pass in set no format, that'll stop the JSON formatting. When working with an LLM, it's quite useful to have a system prompt. To do this on Olama, simply pass in forward slash set space system and a string. In this case, I'm gonna pass in a large language model called Llama3. If I now try to query the large language model, it'll be aware of the context of its system prompt and hopefully responses it provides will use that as context. You can check what the system prompt is at any time by passing in forward slash show space system. There's a few other things you can show for the current model you're working on. For example, forward slash show space info will show the size and family of the model. That covers most of the essential set commands. On top of that, we can 
can also clear chat history in case we need to while working with the model. To do this, simply pass in forward slash clear, and this will mean that the context is no longer there. You can set no history in the model too, if that's another way you want to utilize it. Olama has quite a few models that you can actually preview on the website to see what they're capable of doing. Right now, the most popular model is the Llama 3 model, but next I wanted to take a look at one of the vision models to showcase how it actually functions inside of Olama. If you filter by lava, you can select the vision model, which has 7 billion, 13 billion, and 34 billion options. Of course, some of these might be too large to run on your computer. I'm just going to set the default one and install it on my own Mac OS instance over here. I'll pass in the command Olama run LLAVA. As always, it'll download the smallest model to run on the PC. This model, however, isn't the best. So I'm also going to download the largest model, the 34 billion parameter one, and showcase you the differences each one produces. I've gone ahead and download two images. One's a JPEG and the other one's a PNG. Both of these can be used by the vision model. Here in terminal, I have the small vision model ready for use, and I'm gonna pass in a very simple prompt as well as the path of the image. So in Mac, this is in my user directory. So I'm gonna pass in forward slash a user, then my username, Adrian Tuarog, then the downloads directory, and finally the file name. You might get a prompt requiring permissions to view this folder and file, which I'll select allow. It only takes a few seconds to analyze the image, and I have a prompt here that this is a picture of a Pikachu. At first glance, this looks great, but the smaller image model comes into problems when you start trying out different images that are a bit more complex. I've got image-2.jpg here, and if you have a look at this one, it's also a Pikachu. Even though we both know this isn't the same Pokemon, it's actually a Charmander. This is where we need a bigger model that can better identify different types of objects in an image, because the small model just can't do that very well. The 34 billion parameter model actually does a better job properly identifying this as a Charmander. However, the drawbacks of larger models are always that they're a little bit slower, take up more RAM and CPU processing. Olama also has an API. If you head to the bottom right at docs, then you can browse through the official documentation, which is on GitHub. Under the API reference, I wanted to showcase how a simple API is set up for all of the models that you can utilize within your local host PC. Here's an example of how the requests work. This is a post request I could make to the API using something like fetch inside of JavaScript or React but I'm gonna run this in my own terminal to showcase that the API is working. I'm gonna have a new session over here and I'm gonna paste in this curl command. And as you can see, it streams out the responses showing that the API is working. 